Prescription Flomax. Good evening. Sales of over-the-counter children's cold remedies plunged 16% since FDA experts questioned their safety. Holiday travelers be warned. Gas is up 13 cents in two weeks to $3.09 a gallon. And the animated epic Beowulf won the weekend box office. I'm Russ Mitchell, CBS News. Here's to men who want more time at the game and less time in the men's room. Here's to guys who want to go less at night. And here's to Flomax. In one week, Flomax may relieve male urinary symptoms due to BPH, also called an enlarged prostate. Flomax, just once a day, may help symptoms like frequently waking up to go, going often, weak stream, in one week. Only your doctor can tell if you have BPH, not prostate cancer. Common side effects of Flomax are runny nose, dizziness, and decrease in semen. Upon standing, a sudden drop in blood pressure may occur, rarely resulting in fainting. So when starting Flomax, avoid situations where injury could result. If considering cataract surgery, tell your eye surgeon you've taken Flomax. Could you feel a difference in one week? Call 877-4-FLOMAX and ask your doctor about Flomax. Flomax could make a difference in one week. For more, go to cbsnews.com. Retirement. It may be a long way off or another adventure waiting just ahead. Pacific Life can help provide income you can enjoy for the rest of your life. Because retirement could be a very long ride. Ask your financial professional about Pacific Life. Pacific Life, the power to help you succeed. Play artist Smashing Pumpkins. That's a sync system. Voice activates MP3s, cell phones. Do that again. Play artist Tiffany. Play artist Michael Bolton. Play artist Corn. MPGs meet MP3s. The new 35 miles per gallon 2008 Ford Focus. It's not always just the thought that counts. Give him something he'll really love and want to use every day. The Philips Norelco Architect. Its flexible head removes even the trickiest hairs from his neck. Simplicity is giving him a gift he'll actually use. CBS Tuesday. We've made over 200 arrests thanks to Avis fingerprint matches. I doubt we're gonna get it. All roads lead to the father boss. He's running because he's wanted for murder. You sound tired. Following Ziva. Even the dogs are tired. <laughs> a new NCIS van. Let's move. The Unit. New episode after a new NCIS CBS Tuesday. He seems an unlikely poster boy for the war on terror. Omar Carter is a Canadian citizen. He likes Harry Potter, and he was only 15 years old when he was captured by the U.S. Army in Afghanistan. And that's what makes his case so controversial, his age. Omar Carter is the only person in modern history to be charged for war crimes he allegedly committed while a minor. Tonight, we're going to give you a rare glimpse into a Guantanamo case, one of the first that will be prosecuted. As you watch what follows, consider this. Is Omar Khadr a hardened terrorist, a bad seed, or an obedient son led astray by his family? These are the last known pictures taken of Omar Khadr before he was captured by U.S. troops. The U.S. accuses him of murdering an American soldier, conspiracy, spying, and more. All done, they say, when he was just 15. Khadr has been detained in Guantanamo Bay for five years, much of the time in a maximum security prison, in a cell with no windows, awaiting a military trial. His lawyers say that due to his age when he was taken prisoner, he should have been considered a child soldier and shouldn't be here at all. As is, the U.S. calls him an unlawful enemy combatant, a euphemism for terrorist. We were not allowed to speak to Omar Carter, but Dennis Edney, one of his lawyers, has visited him in Guantanamo several times. 
You've been in confinement for five years. Think of that. Think of locking a dog in a cage for five years. That's what's happened to, to Omar Khadr. But Omar Khadr faces serious charges, and if convicted, could face up to life in prison. He was captured in eastern Afghanistan, a region notorious for harboring members of Al-Qaeda and the Taliban. In July of 2002, U.S. Special Forces were patrolling the area when they got a tip that some Al-Qaeda members were holed up nearby. Back then, Lane Morris was Sergeant Lane Morris. When his unit approached a walled compound, he says, Al-Qaeda gunmen opened fire, killing Morris's interpreters. These guys just shot them point blank in the face. How many interpreters were killed? Two were killed instantly. And then Sergeant Morris felt something hit his right eye. A piece of the hand grenade shrapnel cut the optic nerve. So right now you're blind in one eye? So I'm blind in one eye. The fighting went on for hours. By the time it was over, the compound looked like this, completely destroyed by 500-pound bombs. Did you think anybody could still be alive inside the compound? No. The assumption was that everybody's dead in there. But when soldiers went in, someone threw a hand grenade at them. One of the medics, Sergeant Christopher Spear, was killed. Then they found Omar Khadr, barely alive, lying in the rubble and blinded in one eye, just like Lane Morris. He's lucky because he killed one medic. Uh, the second medic saved his life. Did he describe the kid? All he said was, man, we got, we got up on that kid and he begged us to kill him. He said, just, just kill me. And he said it in perfect English. The U.S. Department of Defense declined to give us an interview about the Carter case, so we spoke to retired General John Altenberg, a lawyer who reviewed the initial evidence against Carter and counseled